All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, yeah, if you want to sit down, there is some more seats in here. And uh, I'm probably going to let AJ Randall know this thing will not take no 180 feet. <laughs> They got Baptist measurements, you know. I would say probably somewhere under 700 here today. That's how we do it, ain't it, brother? We really did have over 600 of men coming to today. Man, that place was packed, and it was a blessing. And uh, I was excited about it. My folks got saved. Amen. What a blessing it was, and all the help. I've had texts all evening, and yet last night late. Saying, man, we're well able to do this. We're going to be able to take this land. There's nothing to worry about. 
we got this thing, and so we preached several messages on that. And uh, Joshua determined in his heart, we're not going to live this way no more. We're not going to live over here in the wilderness no more. We're going to go see what God has for us. And then we uh, talked about in Joshua chapter number 3, we dealt with some things about uh, the barriers that you would face. There's barriers along the way that Jordan was preached on this morning. That was the barrier that was standing in their way. They couldn't stand on the bank and wait on the water to part. They, they couldn't just speak to the waters and part. But rather the Bible said they had to put the sole of their foot in. And when they did, the Bible said that the water stood. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it stood, man. It had to because God said it was going to. Amen. And so it had no other choice but to do it. And so there was a barrier that they had to face. They were facing something they had never seen before. They were crossing something they had never crossed before on dry ground. And, uh, and so there were some things they had to face when they got there. We faced several barriers along this way. I promise you that. We're still... Uh, some things we're still working through, some things we're still uh, trying to get right and with, with the contractors and the bank and things like that. And they're just barriers. They're just things that are there that sometimes from Stan Rafael, I mean, I'm just like, man, this, I don't even want to deal with this anymore. Get an email that says this, the email says that. And, uh, but you know what? It's just a barrier. Right. It's just a barrier. Right. And, uh, and so we deal with those barriers. We talked about in Joshua chapter number six where, uh, I believe it was preached from this morning, and the Lord told them to go sanctify themselves. He told them to go and circumcise those that uh, uh, had never been circumcised. And then there were some that had been circumcised that got re-circumcised. And uh, so we talked about not only the barriers we faced, but we talked about in that series, the brethren were too fleshful. And that is God wanted to roll the reproach back that had been on them for so long. And so he did that through that typology of circumcision. So we dealt with the brethren being too uh, uh, fleshly. We dealt with, there was battles to fight. And uh, Canaan land wasn't just a place of peace, but it was a place they had to just fight. Right. But the good thing was, when they got there to fight, the battle was already won. Yeah, right. God right. had right. done promised them that he was yes. going to do something. Joshua 7, we dealt with the breaches that were there to fear. That is, there was always the enemy trying to get in. And uh, there was boundaries in Joshua 14 that had to be fixed. The boundaries they, they set up and staked off and said, this is our land. This is where we're at. And, uh, and so there's a lot we dealt with through all that. And, uh, and then here in Joshua chapter number 21 is really my favorite part of the entire chapter. And, uh, and let me turn back to it because the wind's blowing out of everywhere. It's probably warmer out there than it is in here. <laughs> and that's all right. And he said here in Joshua 21 verse 43, God said, and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land. Ain't that good? Yeah. Yep. He didn't just give them some of it. He gave right. them all yeah. of it. God gave it to them. Right. And God gave them all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them bread. Man. Bread. <laughs> That's good. David. And he talked about physical rest going to sleep. He talked about rest from the mouth. He talked about rest from unbelief. He talked about rest from all that they had went through all these years. And the Lord gave them rest round about. And according to all that he swore unto their fathers, there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And the Lord the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Uh, there failed not. Ain't that good? There's just so many words in here. I'd like to say something about them. I'm going to have time. And but there failed not all of any good thing which the Lord had spoken yep. to the yep. house of Israel. And here's my favorite part: all came to pass. Yes. Yes. All of them came to pass. Yes. And uh, and so that is the blessing that we find in Canaan. Yes. And God said, "Listen, all that we've dealt with, all that we've seen, everything they've been through, through the barriers, through the brethren that were." to fleshly, to the battles they were facing, to the breaching uh, that they that they seen, to the boundaries they had to fix, even to the backsliders that didn't want to go over. Listen, then he finds here in Joshua 21, there were blessings there for God, that God had for his people. And I just say this, and I have to say this. Beyond it all, this is what's going to happen next week and or this coming week if it don't rain. Uh, they begin to break ground and all that here. Start moving things. Listen, that is then where we're going to see God begin to bless. Amen. 
God's been good to us anyway. God's been blessing. God gave us family. God's been saving souls. And uh, God's been doing wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. But the blessing that I believe he has for us here, we can't even, we can't even. That's what God can do and what God will do. Everything we're doing is, is unparted waters. Everything we're doing right now is by faith. And, uh, and I will personally thank Cherry Grove Baptist Church and your sacrificial giving and enabling us to be able to do this. It's, it's been phenomenal. It's been wonderful what God do, what he has done through this little church. And I appreciate that. And I know the Lord appreciates that. And, uh, but we still got a million dollars to go. And, uh, and I'm just being honest with you. We got a million dollars to go. And, uh, and listen, I know the bank's got it. They're going to allow us to have it and all that. And that's all well and good. But I want to see God take care of all that. Amen. And, and I know God can. If you can to trust God for $10, you got to trust God for a million dollars. Yep. And I know God's able. Listen, if he can, if he can take that little widow woman in there that had a meal barrel and all she had was just a little, just a little left for her. Her and her son to eat and then die and then a prophet come on the scene and God said, "Listen, fix to me first." And listen, if God can provide for her a daily means of living, He will provide for His church. Yeah. Yeah. And if God can provide for the children of Israel when they crossed over, and, yeah. and He said, "Listen, everything's going to be all right. right. I'm going to take care right. of your battles. There ain't going to be right. no enemies for yeah. you. I'm going to fight them for you. You can win them. You got to trust me. If God can do that for them." Amen. 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 This morning, we're not serving the past God. We're serving the present God. Amen. And everything he did for them, he will do for us. Amen. Today, tomorrow, and days ahead. Thank God for that. Amen. And so I'm thankful for all that's been given and all that's been done. And, and I just ask you to continue doing that and praying for us and praying for the leadership and praying that God would meet that need specifically uh, in days ahead. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I did ask you Several months ago, I said, Listen, here's what we need to pray for. We need to pray for a million dollars. But I want to ask you this don't raise your hand. How many of you have actually prayed for a million dollars? Okay. I mean, earnestly been talking to God, saying, God, this is our need. This is our need. You say, Well, preacher, He hadn't given it yet. We can stick our foot in the water yet. We just been talking about it. We've been standing on the bank looking at Jordan thinking, My Lord, I mean, a million dollars. That's a five thousand. That's a big payment, man. We've been looking at it. I'm not, listen, I'm all for faith. I'm not for four. We've looked at that thing, and we've looked at that thing, and we've looked at that thing, and God has, I mean, over and over and over again, He's been faithful through everything else, and God's saying, listen, I'm going to be faithful to that too. I'm Amen. going to take care of the needs of Cherry Grove Baptist Church. And you say, how's He going to do it? I don't know. Amen. It's going to do it by faith. It may be that little woman. I don't know. It may be that little mind that widow. That's one of the things she has left that God gives her. I don't know what he's going to do. I just know he is. And I'm excited about it. And I'm excited about what he's going to do. And uh, <coughs> all that he's already done, I'm excited about what he's going to be doing. And uh, I, there's a family here with us today. And uh, and there's many, many of you here that have the same testimony. And uh, you can say the same thing as fix to be said. And, uh, but a few months ago, we met a family that came to our church. It's a, it's a single mother, has three children. God allowed us to cross their path one day and give the gospel to them. And God has saved them and done a work in their hearts. And we've been able to be friends with them. And they've joined our church. And they've helped us with everything. And then I asked Miss Shelley just to stand up for a minute and just share with everybody what God's done. Amen. 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 Well, hello. Pastor Tim said, my name is Shelley Freer, and these are my three children, Taylor, Caleb, and Kara. Amen. And he asked me, Enveloped us with all of its warmth and all of its peace, and it's a pleasure to have it. And we left the devil in anticipation of every walk of our lives. 
most genuine church you will ever see. I mean, from the moment you walk in the door, they don't see you for your clothes, they don't see you for what you look like, they see you as a person that God created in their attention. So there are four things that I have, my family and I, have had to do for getting, and there will be many more to come, but these are the four that come to my mind. And the first one is pride. We've had the guilty early on. Amen. I cannot tell you how many times when it's not preached, but it's encouragement. You need to be in your Bible. You need to tell us. And you will read it, it will guide you through every walk of life. But you never have to learn from anything, you will never have to learn anything more than the utter word of God. Amen. So that's the first thing. We've been able to grow. And then the second thing is we've been able to love. We've been able to love a living God. Amen. The one that will never leave us, never forsake us, will always be there no matter what. I my family had to feel like we love one another. And you in turn have loved us back. Unconditionally, there's never well, if you do this, you'll get this in return. No, we get the love from every one of you. And so for that, we have to do it. The third thing we had the ability to do. This was our first youth conference. This was our first men uh, meeting, men conference that we got to attend to. And I'm going to tell you what a blessing it was. You know, to work alongside a fellowship of women. It's just, it's an embodiment of Christ working with those women. I mean, we were all together just going back and forth to glorify Him. Not ourselves, not Cherry Grove, but God. Amen. Amen. And then the fourth thing I wanted to say is that my family and I have the ability to commit. Amen. To commit ourselves to other people. Amen. We have the ability to commit ourselves to Cherry Grove as a church that speaks the name of God. Amen.
wasn't just too long ago, me and my son, we was walking through the woods, going to tents, sharing the gospel with homeless people <laughs> here in North Wilson. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and listen, they're out there. And, uh, and, and the only hope they have is not the government. The only hope they have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, it's only the gospel right. that can put a foundation back under their feet. It's only the gospel that can put homes back together. It's only the gospel that can change young people. It's only the gospel. Yeah. We can entertain right. how we want. And we can have Jesus, Jeff, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the power of the gospel right. that changes right. 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 Some things going to last. Some things going to work. Some things going to last. So we want to be a help and a blessing uh, to those in our county. Man, we want to help the sheriff's department. We want to help them all. Right. And uh, keep people out of there. And, uh, and it's good. we got one of our commissioners I know of. There may be somebody else here, Brother Ed Saddle. And uh, it's good to have him here with us. Amen. And, uh, Amen. and listen, I appreciate good Christian men that are working for our Amen. Yeah. And uh, it's a very important thing to have them here <coughs> and, uh, and part of this county to keep that root, keep that heritage that we have. And uh, it's always good uh, to have them here with us and, and have them run in our county. Amen. And, uh, and we want to be, we want to be a we want to be a co-laborer with them, right. help them, right. and uh, the best way to help our county is to get the gospel to them. Right. Yep. 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 We get the gospel to them. We've knocked on every single door in this <coughs> every one of them. Right. And, uh, and, and it's that time we got to rewind and go do it again. Right. Right. Knock on every door again, 60-some thousand people. You say, preacher, it's impossible. And that one time, right. and uh, we do it again. Amen. And, uh, and get the gospel to these people. Listen, you never know what that pamphlet's going to do inside of you. Right. And uh, it changes lives, I'm telling you. And that's the power, the power of the gospel. I'm going to get Brother Heath to come, and he's going to share a little bit here. This is Heath Williams, and uh, he's an evangelist, and uh, we've had a good time together today talking about everybody and making fun of people. <laughs> <laughs>
Jesus won't find there one day. Look at Peter and say, who do men say that I am? Lisa, who do you say that I am? And then Jesus stops right at that place. He says, I know y'all boys know this place. Everybody's afraid of it. It's the literal center of all darkness. He said, but Peter, upon this rock, right. that points to himself. Yep. Uh-huh. He said, I shall build my church. Uh-huh. Amen. This it ain't preacher's job. It ain't y'all's job. We're called to be faithful. Thank God to let us be faithful. Yeah. You're just obeying God. You're stepping out by faith. Uh-huh. Amen. It's up to God to build the church. Amen. Amen. We save ourselves a lot of arguments and stress. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how to build stuff and run it like a business. Yeah. <laughs> Let God build the church. Amen. 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 Say, preacher, these are dark days. Well, how are we going to get all this done, pay for it, get people in here? How's this many people going to come? That ain't our business. Amen. 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 You say, well, the devil's destroying people. We'll never reach them kind of people. That's a rare occurrence. I don't know. Jesus walked in the epicenter of all darkness. Yes, he said, I got all power. Amen. Amen. Church, he'll build his church. Amen. Keep building families. Right. You know why God goes against folk like that? Because they give them all the glory. Yeah. 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 Everybody looks around and they say, man, how in the world is all this happening for? Well, you say that's Jesus. Yeah. 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 You know what the church really is? It's a bunch of misfits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> broken people. Yeah. 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 Just a hospital for hurt people. We're a bunch of broken people. Yeah. 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 Ain't nobody in here got it figured out. Yeah. 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 We just all need God to each other. Yeah. 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 If we do it right, that'll be enough. Right. Yeah. Here's one I want to share with you. Second Chronicles chapter number seven. Of course, you all know verse number fourteen about it, my people. That's not where I want to go. The Lord began to really touch my heart just the other day when the preacher asked me to stay over for this. I, I thought immediately about this verse because I, I preached for a place and uh, they had an old building, and in the sixties revival came. I mean, I'm talking about revival where folk was getting right with God and each other around the clock. He said, then it broke out. Once revival comes, I mean, no folk will get saved. Yeah. It's always the problem. Yeah. People started getting saved just around the clock. He said, so many people at the church is hanging out off the old shutter windows in the church, sitting outside, hanging off the balcony, sitting. They said it had three people sitting in a pew. Daddy holding an older child who was holding a younger child. That dear preacher called Brother Percy Ray, probably one of my greatest heroes. He said, God told me to call you. He said, this is beyond me, but you've got to touch him. God opened for revival. Can you tell him? He said, I'll be there. They started preaching. God did something. They stayed in that. Man, I can tell you all kind of stories how God just powerfully set all this up. And for two years, that church lived in that revival. Glory was on that building. Power's on that building. But they ran out of space. Long time it's been since those days in the 60s, and they built a new building. I never forget what the pastor told me. He said, Boy, this building's nice. Beautiful. He said, I'm afraid my people have not paid the price yet for it to have the same glory on it that the old building has. Uh, Boy, yeah. it hit me in the heart. Yeah. I, I'm a history buff. I know all the preachers involved. Listen to Brother Ray on time. I slipped over. That, 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 that night, it was Sunday night, I said, well, I, got, I realized how I was connected. I was out back in the new church, and so I got them hurt. I just went and sat in that old building. Man, it was like a hundred pounds of God in there. And I thought, this don't feel anything like what that new building felt like this morning. Now, I'm not saying that to throw any water on what we're doing today, because that ain't a God problem. Right. Right. See, the issue wasn't that they built the building. It was obvious God put it on the preacher's heart. To this day, he knows that was God's will. Right. Listen, too much is given, much is required. Right. Right. Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. Yeah. There's some things we've got to do. Yeah. I'll read to you here. I want you to keep this in mind. The Bible says, verse number one. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. You realize Solomon's temple, the only reason it was so magnificent, had a wonder of the world, 
And the reason that later on the old men cried and the young men shouted at the second temple. It wasn't all the gold. It wasn't all that beauty. It wasn't all that marble and stone and the cedars and leather. What made this place what it was and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Yeah. Verse number two. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Notice verse number three. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, notice all the children, that's all ages. Yet nobody had to tell them how to worship. Amen. They didn't need a coach. Right. The Holy yep. Ghost does that job. Amen. Right. Amen. All the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, the glory of the Lord upon the house. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped. And praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Everybody wants chapter number seven. Yeah. Everybody wants the glory. Yeah. There's a price for the glory. Everybody wants the verse number 14 where God says he'll send revival if my people. Right. But hear me today. There was a chapter number six. Before there was a chapter number seven. Yeah. Chapter number six, Solomon confessed all the sins of Israel. Yeah. He confessed their sins. He confessed his sins. He said, preacher, I ain't living in no bad sin. What I'm talking about today, I'm talking about getting humble before God. Yeah. Saying, God, even them little things, them little foxes, as Solomon yeah. said, spoils right. my yeah. God searched me. God, you make me the best Christian I can be because Cherry Grove's going to need it yeah. in these days to come. Amen. 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 He, he confessed. He told God, He said, I'm a child. God, I don't know how to come right. out. I don't know how Amen. to go in. You know what the best thing we can tell God today about all this? Lord, I ain't got a clue what right. I'm doing. Right. 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 You say, well, that sure don't sound like a good business formula when you're in leadership and you're a vice president. Hey, we ain't running a business. Right. Right. I didn't have to go to college. You didn't have to get a big degree. We just got a big God. Right. Right. How are you going to do it? He said it better. <laughs> what are we going to do? We got a clue. God ain't never asked us to. Right. He just said, follow me by faith. Amen. Somehow on your knees, Amen. with a humble heart before a holy God, you say, God, I'm a child. I don't know how to do my part around here. I don't know what to do, God, but help me to bring you glory. God, help me to honor you. You'll find a God that can take a group of people that don't have a clue what to do. But God does. He can do miracle after miracle. Amen. That's what will change the community. Amen. That's what will get them interested. Amen. Now, there's chapter number six. Here we are with what I just read to you. <coughs> Solomon made an end of praying. Glory filled the house. Yeah. So much so the priest that did these daily activities in the tabernacle and now in the temple to serve God. There's so much God in there that couldn't even enter in. You know what the hope is today? It ain't Washington. It ain't Republican. It ain't Democrat. The, the, the hope of America is that the glory of God Amen. will be in His church. Amen. Amen. That's what will save families. Yes. That's what will reach this community. That's what will save your babies. That's what will touch your marriage. Yep. With the glory of the five seconds in God's real presence, yes, we'll do sir. more than a lifetime of programs. Yeah. Right. Amen. Oh, yes. I just simply mainly come to tell you today we need God. Amen. Saying God was up on the mountain, He'll be right here if you ask Him. Yeah. Amen. 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 Somebody paid a price for them stones that's by the door. Right. What mean you these stones? Yeah. There's some old timers that may already be in heaven that can tell you what them stones meant. Yeah. Meant some nights of praying instead of sleeping. Yeah. Meant some fasting instead of feasting. Uh, yeah. Built it off the back of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Whole lot of effort, whole lot of sacrifice, whole lot of giving. Yeah. But God gave them what they had up there. Amen. The God of the mountains also the God right here. Right. 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 Somebody's got to have some stones. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to be like Solomon and go get God. Oh, yeah. Say, God, we're going to build all of this and it's going to be beautiful, but if you ain't here, it's all in vain. Right. 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 Brethren, right. we've met towards you. <laughs> Unless he comes, all is in vain. Yeah. Build it as beautiful as you want it to, big as you want it to. But if God's not there, right. it won't be beautiful. Right. 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 Solomon made an end of praying for glory. I'm going to say two things. Number one, you need to make sure you go get God and get the glory. Right. Amen. Make sure that the Holy Ghost is here. Right. He's promised he would be. You say, well, preach, how do you know? That'd be like him telling Joshua, come up out of the wilderness. This generation is the generation of the promised land. Cross over Jordan. And when they get to the other side of the bay, God says, I ain't going with you. He stays on the other side. 
and made God bipolar. Uh -huh. God wouldn't tell you to come down here if he wasn't planning to bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he right. wasn't going to be here, but hear me. We can grieve him. Yes, we got a choice in this thing, church. Yes. And God has never made backroom deals. Just like with the children of Israel, he'll shame his old name before a pagan world, before he'll compromise with his people. Amen. 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 Oh, we yeah. got to pay the price. Could be that God leads you to come over here on Saturdays and walk these grounds and beg God to blank it like the Holy Ghost, like the dew of the Lord. You in the mountains, you know how when that thick fog rolls in yes. and it just covers everything. Amen. Sometimes I like to pray like they said about Sandy Creek and say, God, I pray that the Holy Ghost will fall on this thing like the morning do. Yeah. Just being just so covered like a place. Yes. Yes. God saves souls and put convicted power on this man. Amen. 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 You might come before work, after work, but I promise you, we'll do a lot of things here, but if it don't start in, we'll pray and we won't do anything. Right. 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 Here's number two. It matters that we get the glory. But understand even harder than getting the glory is keeping the glory. Right. What do you mean, preacher? Let me give you a little Jewish history here I learned going to Israel. Uh, history, of course, here in the Bible, Solomon prays, he dedicates it, the glory falls, they all worship. But history tells us, Jewish history says that that night, now mind you, Solomon has just prayed in the glory. He's got God on it. How many of you know one second, one decision, yeah. without we we walk away from God, it can bring reproach. Uh -huh. Solomon that day after the temple was dedicated, he married. History tells us he married Pharaoh's daughter as a gift. She was full of pagan gods that had already been kind of enticing him. Uh -huh. History says that that night Solomon took his wife. She talked him in to put them idols up in the in the, in the palace right. and rendered some worship and some sacrifice to him. And here's what history says. His mama Bathsheba, <laughs> who we also find that history tells us Solomon wrote Proverbs 31 about his mother, Bathsheba, because it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. Amen. Right. She knew God after her failure. She walked in and saw what Solomon was doing. History says she began to speak under the touch of God. She began to tell her boy with fire in her lips, what are you doing? This ain't how a king behaves. Why are you doing all of this? And when Solomon wrote Proverbs 31, he was actually repeating back under the inspiration of God what his mama told him about how he had married Rome and what a real woman was supposed to be. Solomon had the glory at lunchtime, but by midnight, he had lost it. The temple had the glory. For 40 years, Solomon was the great king, but he never did all that he could have done for God because he had a chink in his armor. But as a man in his elder age, writing about his mother, if you read Proverbs 31, it'll mean a whole lot more to you now. It talks about how she pushes her husband towards God. It's not a reproach. Church, hear me today. It's one thing to get God. It's one thing to get to the promised land and cross over and go after it. Get all God has for us, but it's a whole other thing to not only get there, but to be able to stay and live and die there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take holiness. Yeah. It's going to take humility one to another, preferring each other above ourselves. Yeah. Well, I don't like how they're doing things. I don't like what preacher did. I wouldn't put everything in that building just like it was. Hey, Good thing is you ain't going to have to answer to God for an error bit of it. Amen. Amen. So the best thing we can do is this. Just say, God, I want to be the best Cherry Grove church in the Amen. 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 God, is this little Baptist church built here on this property. God, I pray you fill the temple with your glory. Amen. And then God, don't let us ever lose the glory. Amen. 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 It's a price, church. I often have thought, what would Solomon and what would that place have been? If he would have just kept God first, yeah. Yeah. kept that focus like we talked right. about this morning. But guess what? It was there at one time. Here's how I want to end today. I want you to know that God that was up there, if you'll gather them stones, that's the God that'll be here. Right. Yes. Right. And when God starts moving, 
Don't lay down somewhere in the corner and cry your eyes out and say, well, I got to be like Solomon. It's all going to blow apart. Ain't no way this is going to be good. Oh, no, 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 no. Take it as a, take it as a warning. Take it as a wisdom. Here's what we ought to do. We ought to be thrilled to death with one arm, shouting about what God's doing Amen. and giving God glory for everything yes. He starts doing on these grounds. With that other hand, you ought to have the sword. Yep. Yeah, you ought to be looking around for the devil yeah. and say, hey, it ain't about me, but greater is he that's in me. Yeah. Yeah. He that's in this world. Yeah. And say, we ain't going down like Solomon did. Yeah. By the grace of God, Cherry Grove ain't going to get mis mixed up and we ain't going to lose the glory. Amen. We're going to unify. Amen. We're going to look at the devil and say, our God's greater. Amen. Amen. We're going to stick together. We're going to work together. We're going to fight together. We're going to love together. And we're going to reach people together. We're going to preach together. We're going to serve together. With that sword, you say, I'm watching out for you. The devil, you ain't having my church. You ain't having my family. Amen. When all that's coupled together, I believe that's the kind of church that Jesus died for. Upon this rock, I shall build my church. Amen. God's going to take care of it all, church. Just wait for the miracles. Obey the Lord. Trust Him in everything. The gates of hell ain't going to prevail. God's going to do some great things for you. Amen. Amen. What an Amen. honor to be a part. I love you. I can't wait to see what happens in the days Amen. ahead. Amen. 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 Give God all the glory. Amen. What a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. It thrills my soul. Amen. That's the one thing. Last Sunday, <coughs> the church that was alive, and God said, No, nah, you're dead. The church is somewhere in Sarla. Is that right? Sarla. Sarla. I can't remember what I preached. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's good, but I don't remember. It's good. <laughs> they had a testimony. Yes, sir. They just didn't have, just didn't have God. Yes, sir. One of the greatest fears I've always had as a pastor always is that we go through the motions, we do what we do, and God's not even in it, and we don't even know it. Right. Right. So that's where they were. Sure. And we need the Lord. And uh, we, we have seen 2001, 2002, we've seen the windows raised, the trucks backed up to the bus. Yeah. We've seen it. We've seen the glory fall on the mountain before. Yeah. And uh, we've seen God fill it from the front to the back, right. out the windows. Right. And, right. and people was hungry. People was getting right. Listen, we can't lose that. Right. right. Now, that wasn't, wasn't 19 years ago. It's right. still available today. Right. right. Amen. And God's still doing it today. Amen. And I'm telling you, that's what we're going to have. We've got to have And we can't do it without it. And I've said from day one, if I felt like moving down here is going to lose the spirit of our church and the power of our church, we'll just stay up our from now. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, we'll, we'll put people in Sunday school rooms if we have to, and we'll park off in the holes if we have to. And uh, but listen, it's all about Him. It's all about His glory. It's about what He can do. And uh, we got to keep that in our focus. Well, I want us to be very careful on this next item here. And. Uh, step out here. It's the back side of the property. And as most of you know this, but these are all of our deacons and uh, assistant pastor here. And, uh, and we're going to step out here and we're going to break some ground. And uh, we're going to uh, put the sole of our feet in the water. Yeah. Amen. 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 And, uh, Amen. That's God's plan. Yeah. Amen. So I'm going to sit back here and over back. This back side. And uh, I don't know what God's going to do. I really don't. I don't know how He's going to do it. I don't know. I don't know that. I just know that He will. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm excited about it. And I hope you'll pray for us. Pray for these men. Amen. And uh, you pray for myself and my family. The devil will keep away from us. Uh, yep. Amen. Yep. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Amen. And, uh, sir. First and third Monday, this morning till 7 o'clock, I'm going to be here. And uh, I hope you can come join with me. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, first and third Monday of every month, and uh, I'm going to come here and pray. And if somebody's already here praying, you just pray. Don't wait on me to get started. You just come pray. If you have to sit in the car, sit in the car. And if 
just pray. You have to pull down out of the corner and pray, go pray in that corner. And go pray up there. There's been a lot of equipment here, but wherever, listen, just pray. Get out and pray. The Bible said these men you just read, they, they laid their faces to the pavement. Yes. Listen, they humbled them, so God. Yes. They humbled them. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're going to see God do the miraculous. There's, there's always the promise. That principle of praying is still in the Bible. Right, right, right. And uh, we've got to apply the principle to claim the promises and just hope it happens. Right. And just hope that people right. like Tim McKenna is a preacher. They ain't going to like me. They ain't going to hope they just like require. They ain't going to require. And uh, we need the power yes. yes. of God. Amen. Yep. Amen. 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 Yep. That's it. Amen. So we're going to step back back here and we're going to probably cry like babies. <laughs> we're going to sing a good verse and God can be good. And uh, we're going to stick a shovel in the ground. We've got uh, seven shovels for our deacons. we got a shovel for my assistant, myself. And then uh, Miss Betty Young, she's been here a long time. And uh, if there's a, a lady that's been consistent. Amen. Yep. Consistent. Amen. There's been a woman that I've seen the glory of. Amen. Amen. And uh, we we know the alleys. We know the man. Listen, we know all those that's done dead and gone on. They're not here with us. Right. They left us a heritage. Yes. 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 Miss Betty. Miss Betty's. She's she's finishing this thing out. But she's been faithful. She's been here, and uh, her and. Trying to do the math on her, Miss Sybil, Brother Hurley, and uh, they probably some of the longest standing members of the church. And uh, up here with us. And they <laughs> they fought, they prayed. They've not just been here to be in a position. Brother Hurley didn't just want to be a deacon to be in some position. <coughs> I believe it's been his burden to see this church do exactly what God wants this church to do. Yeah, pray. Yeah. I believe, listen, every one of these men, they, there's not a one of them, not a one of them <coughs> that's tried to boss me around. There's not a one of them that said, well, you're crazy. Every, they know that I'm already crazy. <laughs> every one of them said, preacher, whatever the Lord says, we're going to do it. Amen. Amen. And uh, if this sounds like something stupid, then let me know how stupid it sounds. <laughs> but if I know it's God, I just say, we need to do it anyway. Yeah, right. Amen. And, uh, but I, I appreciate godly men that we meet, we talk, we discuss, we've racked our brains, we've done everything we can do. Uh, listen, we, we, we've looked at this thing up to one side, down the other side, and trying to come up with the best, best option to do. And, and I think we got it. And uh, trying to keep it in a, uh, in a faith uh, based way of trusting God. No matter, listen, if it's a ten thousand dollar bill we're gonna have to trust God for it. Right. And uh, and so uh, but we believe God's got everything worked out. And uh, if we have to spend more than a million dollars get this thing done, we just spend what we whatever whatever God has us to do, we just gonna trust him for it. Amen. And uh, and you've got to know we ain't gonna be foolish about it either. Right. And uh, we're gonna trust God. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and we're not gonna we're not gonna tear down the tent and grow trees up here and just shut the gates or nothing like that over money, and we're going to trust God for it. Amen. 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 He's all right, man. He's put so many people in our path. We've been able to talk to people and contractors and banks and uh, just different people with different ideas. And so, you know, everybody's got the opinions, and uh, just like everybody's got armpits and uh, and half of the state. And uh, and so, uh, so we've had some wisdom in some of that, too. Amen. And so we're thankful uh, that, that that God's brought people by, and we're thankful that God's took some people out. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, and, and He does. That's how He does it, man. He, he, he ain't gonna, uh, he ain't gonna mess around neither. And uh, so I do ask you to pray for us and just help us in days ahead. Uh, first, third Monday of each month when we hear, our, you know, just one every time. I'm I'm saying seven o'clock. If you're coming home from work, come by. Just stop and pray. Preacher just said it. And uh, which confirmed everything I had wrote down on my phone to say. And then I was like, well, Lord, I need to come here and pray.
way we got to go to church on Wednesday night. Lord, oh, that's going to be a lot of running. No, uh, we got to pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. got to pray. Right. Now, it ain't about it ain't about coming here. And well, I prayed thirty minutes today. That's good. Now, listen, if you can pray three minutes to get a hold of God, I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, listen, if you just pray, I'll be happy. Yes. Amen. Amen. And hopefully, Lord willing, I've been trying to put that prayer book together and uh, been just a little bit busy here lately, and I still ain't got it done. So I'm trying to get it done. And uh, to give to everybody in here is 31 days of prayer. And uh, and every day has a specific thing to pray for. And uh, there's some journal behind it that you can write down some specific things. And uh, when you're done with it, uh, you can go back and do it all again. Right. And uh, we're not talking about prayer, seeing for repetition praying. We're just talking about consistent. Amen. And uh, there's a lot to pray for. And, uh, and, and one of the big ones in our church. We're going to step around back here, and, uh, and we're going to hope and pray in Jesus' name that Vulcan Rock is up there, and this is all soil and sod down here. We're going, to, we're going to start off in the chorus of God is good, and then we're going to go into the chorus of He saved my soul, and then we're going to end it by saying He's coming back. How it goes, how's it in? He's coming soon. And uh, I don't want to mess that up. But listen, there's a lot of people right over here, right down there. So I could feel. And uh, we're not going to sing this like we're in the music hall. We're going to sing it like we're on the mountain. Hey, man. Hey, man. Uh, we're going to start out. God's good, God's saved, God's coming back. All right, here we go. God is so good. God
but I go get the corner stop, and a corner stop, and a corner stop, and a corner stop. Thank like God, God we got a blessing in the corner. Hey, man. You wait. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, because we can't do it without it. Right. And I know we got to have it. And I don't care about money. I don't care about the beauty. I just care that he's here. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Open and pray. 
away, and that Burley wins the lottery. <laughs> 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 Let's gather around, and uh, we can make some kind of circle. It ain't you're talking about like that. Let's gather around right quick, and uh, let's pray, and uh, body heat, and body heat, and uh, warm each other up.
blow the minds of your people, God, with your skulls. Let these babies see God. Let these babies know there's a real God that they can serve. Show thy hand of power, God. Whoa, granted, God, we agree with you. Claiming victory ahead of time, giving you glory for what will be done. Yes, Lord. Oh, we agree. All of us hold you. Oh, baptize these right. Baptize these little babies. God, I pray that they'd be teenagers and adults still digging with shovels, still digging those wells, still seeing you build your church. Oh, God, they got to see you. Good God. Let them see you, Lord. Tell them, God, let them see you in these days. Let us pay the price so our babies can see the stars. Lead some of them boys. Magnify your name, God. This is your place, your ground, your building, your idea. God, this is your preacher, your word, everything here's yours, God. We dedicate it to you. Separated, all that stress, don't let it affect this family. 